Hello and welcome. My name is Lars Hoffman and welcome to this lecture on board game design or how to design your own board game. Uh, I am a management consultant and I have a special business developing learning board games. Uh, so that's kind of where my experience comes in to help you make your own board game. But this, this uh, lecture will also be on uh, how to make board games for pure entertainment. We'll combine those as we go along. Uh, a board, what is a board game really? That's something uh, you can uh, discuss a long time. If, for this lecture, we, it'll be some kind of a uh, toy that is um, more rigorous and with some rules and where you can win and where the action is played out on a board. So that's the challenge for you, how to design uh, a game that uh, centers around your own board. Uh, we will go through the 10 steps or 10 phases of uh, board game design. And uh, if you're a professional, you skip along back and forth between all these phases, so it's never as simple as that, but I try to make it as easy to, uh, to, to approach as possible. But you should know that uh, when you're a professional, especially the last six to ten phases, you repeat a lot of times before you go into printing. So uh, let's get into it and check out the first phase. Uh, your first phase is ideation. That's how to get your ideas to get started. And uh, in this phase, you, uh, you just need to uh, get a lot of ideas, a lot of things uh, running, uh, to talk a lot, to try a lot, and uh, try to get uh, your imagination flowing. And there are a lot of different angles where you can start from, and I've, uh, I've pointed out a few of them here on the, on, on the slideshow. And uh, of course, you can, you can start with any of them. You can uh, combine them as you wish. The first one, is uh, called uh, is combining or improving on in, on existing games, and uh, I would surely recommend that you kind of take an approach uh, going out from the games that you already know, uh, trying to invent games that are completely new from other kinds of board games. That's very challenging and uh, perhaps not the best way to start if you're a, a beginner or a novice in developing uh, your own board games. So try to take a look at some of the games you know already. Which games do you really like? Which games could be combined in fun ways. Uh, you could uh, imagine how could we combine chess and poker or something like that and try to start from there. Uh, even, even if you don't start with uh, combining or uh, starting with a, a known game, you should always know which game that you, you're, the one you're designing is most similar to. So step one is something you should also always consider which other games are, is our game uh, similar to. So that's uh, the, the, the first way you could begin. Another way to begin your, on your first step is to, uh, to choose a, a story, uh, something that you know already, uh, a theme or a metaphor or something. It, you could say, uh, let's do a game about zombies. That's very popular these days. Uh, you could say vampires. You could say, uh, no, let's take soccer. Or let's take a, a game about a high school reunion, some, th some theme or story that you think is really fun or engaging, uh, interesting, that uh, you think will catch on to others. Um, so here you can either compose your own story or take an existing one that you know from literature or uh, cinemas or the like. Um, that should get your imagination flowing and then the, the, the object is of course after you have developed your story how can we make that into a game? How can we create a game where you progress through those stages that the story is about? Let's say that you think the idea of a treasure hunt in Africa in the 18th century, that's really interesting, or the 19th century. Then, uh, then you would, of course, go into, OK, how, how, is the, how do, does the game progress along the lines of such a story? First you get a boat, then you get into the jungle, and then you follow a map, or how, should, how is that made into a game? Uh, so that's how, uh, how you could start getting your ideas from a storyline. Uh, and even if you don't start here, your game should, at one point or another, uh, get a story or a theme, something that, that uh, gives meaning to all the, the components in the, in the game. Um, some games are purely abstract and have almost no story, but that's actually quite rare. Even a game such as chess has a kind of story about two kings uh, fighting it out. And that, that story gives meaning to the different uh, tokens uh, on the board and different moves they make, even though it is a very abstract game. 
Uh, so that was the second approach. The third approach would be to start with some kind of game mechanic that you find is very interesting. And game mechanics are the, the basic nuts and bolts, the things that are in the game. It could be, uh, I think it's really interesting where you draw a lot of cards and you discard some of them and play others. Or I think it's really interesting to draw a lot of cards and you force others to use the cards that you think are really bad. That's the kind of game mechanic uh, about picking up cards or whatever. Uh, another game mechanic could be to roll a die and move a piece uh, on the board. That's also a game mechanic. So uh, approaching the game from a game mechanic way would, would be kind of looking into games that have a mechanics you think are interesting and say, how could you combine these mechanics into a, a very interesting game? And there are a lot of different uh, game mechanics. It could also be uh, dexterity things. You have to throw something or catch something. It could be uh, you have to combine words, you have to answer questions, you have to guess what others are thinking. These, these are all game mechanics that figure in different kinds of games that you could pick, draw upon and combine into a, a new and interesting game. And even if you don't start here at the game mechanic park, your game should have game mechanics. So we need, even if you start with the story, uh, then you should some, uh, some way along the, the line figure out which game mechanics do we put in to drive the story forward. Um, yeah, the, 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 the fourth way to begin is to choose a skill, something that you think, this skill is really interesting, how could we make a game that challenges this skill? And what do I mean by that? Well, it could be that you think negotiation is really interesting. How could we make a game that, uh, that challenges your ability to negotiate? You should put you into a situation where you negotiate with other players, uh, with, uh, perhaps you're on the same team with some of the players, you also have to negotiate with them, or uh, etc. Creating, how can we uh, create interesting negotiation situations? And that will get you thinking about story, that will get you thinking about game mechanics, that will perhaps get you thinking about which game is it similar to other games that you know, which has some elements of negotiation. And these skills can be very different. It could be physical dexterity skills, it could be social skills like guessing what others are thinking, or uh, your empathy skills, how good are you at uh, reading other people's emotions, uh, stuff like that. That could be your starting point and get you thinking into how can we make a game around this skill and challenge that skill in, a, in an interesting and fun way. Uh, finally, you could uh, begin with uh, your audience, selecting uh, an audience. Let's say I want to make something for fans of this particular sport. I want to make something for young children, uh, young girls. You're selecting a target audience and then starting about uh, thinking about which kind of games would they find interesting. And then you can go out to the others, thinking about existing games they know, or the stories they're interested in, in, or game mechanics, etc. So even if you don't start with, the, uh, with your target audience as your uh, starting point to get ideas, you should, of course, always, as you're developing your game, get back to thinking which target audience will this game appeal to, and how should we adapt it in order to, to, uh, to make sure it fulfills their interests. And that goes for the skill as well, if I didn't mention it. Even if you don't start with the skill, then you should uh, know during your game design progress which skills uh, do the players bring into this game and which ones will be rewarded, which skills uh, does this game center around. Uh, a game like chess or poker is very mathematical. You have to analyze and combine uh, stuff thinking ahead, so it's very much concentration and skills like that that are uh, rewarded, and that's the case in many games, but there are also games which are centering more about around social skills or physical skills, stuff like that. Uh, so th these are all starting points and uh, should get you playing around with ideas, thinking and brainstorming and getting a, a, a way to get started. And uh, something which I haven't mentioned all along is that physical stuff will also get you started. So if you kind of look on the table here, uh, here is a lot of things that I've brought along, just existing games, a lot of materials. Get a lot of these along, uh, a lot of toys that you li like playing around with. Have, get them on the table and st make your brainstorming or ideation process through your hands. Your, 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 your mouth and your brain is one way to get your uh, thinking uh, and developing uh, the game. But uh, these physical objects will also get you thinking about how could we make a game around this. Some things that are just curious to you, uh, oh, this is interesting, uh, how can we make a game with these components? Something that's fun or, or uh, will, will, will get you uh, uh, mystified and uh, exploring for a long time. That's all, all very helpful. 
And there's also another element to physical stuff. As you're getting started playing, then you should, of course, start writing things down on your components here in order to, uh, to uh, make it more physical as you go along. But never more into more detail than you can't skip it and uh, just discard it all and begin all over. Um, but one thing I would recommend is a thing like index cards, really helpful for, uh, for writing stuff and uh, combining and uh, also uh, different kind of counters or dice is also always helpful. And uh, since we are developing a board game, I would uh, surely recommend that you also find some piece of hard cardboard as large as possible that you can carry around and start drawing on that as you are uh, trying to visualize your, your board. Uh, the board that everything is going to focus around. Uh, so these are all starting points for getting you uh, into th getting ideas. So the key issues or the key decisions here in your first step, that, that will be uh, which, which ideas are we going to stick to? Uh, when are, is everybody saying, hey, that's a really good idea, let's follow that idea. And uh, others' ideas are perhaps just abandoned right away. And you should also try to, something that will make a major impact is whether you'll be thinking from your gut or from your head. Uh, you should definitely try to use both, but one part will probably uh, be the uh, superior part. And uh, also, uh, will you have a kind of messy process where you're just combining everything into one pile? Or are you all, all the time uh, trying to get very simple about it and very clear? Uh, that'll be something that'll make a, a major impact on where you're going. But both approaches can be right to you. So, um, as I said, we have 10 st stages, and this is the first one. If you have, for example, 20 hours available for the whole process, then you should perhaps use approximately 10% here, and that's uh, two hours of getting a lot of ideas and playing around with a lot of ideas. And uh, the time to move on is when you have a, a fun idea for a game that, that really gets you very excited. That's the time to uh, get to the next stage. Mm -hmm.